It's stressful preparing for an interview. Most of the time we're wondering, what are they going to ask me? Or how am I going to respond to the questions? But it's important first to have the basics down. And that means you have to practice your introduction, research the agency and company, rehearse your success stories, and brush up on behavioral questions. But the problem is the competition's doing the same thing. So how do you stand out from the other people that want the job just as bad as you? And in one word, curiosity. Why does this matter? Because people like to be comfortable. You and I, we like to be comfortable. And learning something new, that's uncomfortable. One of the biggest indicators of a successful hire is, is this person coachable? Are they going to be a team player? And curiosity is one of the most common traits of being intelligent. It could mean that you're willing to learn faster and better than the next person. Now, I was in the interview a while back and a guy, he showed up, he sat down. The entire time we had the interview, he was looking at the window over my head. So it didn't seem like he ever truly became comfortable. Very unapproachable vibes. And when he was answering questions, I mean, they were a little bit all over the place. I would ask a question about Microsoft Excel. And what he would tell me was a, an answer regarding Microsoft Word. I'm talking about spreadsheets, you know, pivot tables. And here he is talking about embedding images into a Word document. Completely irrelevant to the question that was being asked. Now I get it, he was nervous. And we're all nervous when we walk into an interview room or when we sign on for the virtual interview. But you need to take the time in order to present your value and sell your skills to that organization. Now, how can you show more curiosity throughout the interview? First is to pause a few seconds before answering. This shows that you're actually thinking about the question and you're formulating your response. So it's, a, it's less like a computer where they just spit out the answer one after another after another. Another thing that you can do is you can repeat the question back and this could buy you more time. Now, I wouldn't do it for every single question, but for some of the more thoughtful questions, definitely take the time to repeat it back to them. Next is when you give your success story. You want to present your achievement as if you went out of the box to find the solution. Everyone's going one way. Everyone's relying on the data from the Excel spreadsheet, but you questioned the integrity of the data. You went upstream. You found out a process was not efficiently implemented and you fixed that. And that's how you drove results. So you didn't do, you didn't connect A, B to C. You went completely outside to maybe Z and X and that's how you ended up at C. Show that you took the effort in order to identify the root cause and you didn't just follow the herd. That's one way that you can show you're a curious individual. Next is to explain how you enjoy learning. This is a little underrated and some people could feel like this is a little too cheesy for them. But if you let it come out organically, naturally, then this can make a huge difference. This could be something like they ask you to tell them a little bit about yourself. Maybe they're asking what was your biggest challenge that you had to overcome? And you could tell them that, you know, I had this challenge. This was an obstacle, but I'm the type of individual that loves learning. So I jumped into the regulations. I read the policy letters and I found the solution or it assisted me in making a decision. So, you know, look at it from that type of perspective. Next is in the questions you are asking them. So at the end of the interview, they often ask you, do you have any questions for us? And one of the worst things that you can do is just shake your head and say no because that means you're not really interested. So what questions should you ask them? A person that's more self-interested, they might ask, can I negotiate the salary? When are you planning on making a selection for this position? Now, a person that's more focused on the organization or that's more curious, they could ask something like, can you describe the work culture in your office? What's the current strategy for you to attain the objectives that you're after? What does the next six months look like for this position? When you ask questions like that, you know, it makes the person on the other side of the table, it makes them think, and it also makes them recognize that you're curious, that you care about the organization and about the struggles that they might be going through. Speaking of that, try to remember during the interview, it is a two-way street where you're also vetting and qualifying your potential boss. So it's not all one-sided. That aside, also keep in mind that you're really there to see if you can find a solution 
for that organization. The company, the agency, the organization, whatever they are, they're experiencing some sort of pain. And that's why the job is open. So it could be a project with no project manager. So the organization is suffering because there's nobody to effectively manage the project. That's their pain point. You want to identify why is this company experiencing pain and how can I communicate that I am the solution to relieve this pain? If you can get that down, that's going to put you far ahead of at least 50 or 60% of the people that are interviewing. So try to make it about them. Now, if red flags are coming up with the hiring manager or, or your future boss, if red flags are coming up, disqualify them. You can always walk away. You can reject the job offer. But that's kind of the mindset that I would take when getting into an interview type situation. And don't forget to practice. The practice really shows through. If you take somebody who practiced, let's say 10 or 20 times and they come into the interview, they're going to perform at least three times better than the person that just says, you know what? I'm just going to try to wing it today. Let's just see what happens. I don't even really want this job anyway. If you do that, you're not getting the full value of the experience. Even if you do not want the job, Go on the interviews and try to hone the skill of communicating, of doing well in an interview. And if you do that, you'll find yourself in a position where not only will you have a lot of interviews, but you will be in a position where you have a lot of job offers coming in. And that is when you can start being selective. I don't want to work for this agency. You know what? I feel like working for this agency. If you want to be in a position like that, you have to become a good communicator. You have to become good at selling your value. Okay, so if you're still looking for a federal government job, you might want to know more about security clearances because there's a lot of government jobs that require security clearances. If that interests you, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.